In this tutorial, we are going to composite fire in Nuke. I'm the NASA with Action VFX, and I will be your instructor for today. So let's get started. Okay, so here is my plate. It is a steady locked off shot with a yellow artificial light to help us blend the fire glow. We also have removed the reflection on the windshield here. I'm going to focus this tutorial on compositing the fire and smoke on top of the car, so I would not focus on some additional effects at the end like the environment fall. To do the fire, I will be using Action VFX fire elements, which you can get on our website, especially now during the Black Friday where everything is 55% off. You can also check the other elements that I'm using in the description below. First, before we begin adding the fire, I have added some fake light flicker. I did this very simply by creating a branch with a luma key so we only isolate the bright area and then pre-mold that key and then I mask only the areas that will get affected by the fire which is the bright yellow lights in the middle here and then I use multiply to control the opacity but instead of animating the flicker manually I used an expression so this is a very simple formula to create a noise wave animation so the values goes up and down non-uniformly you can copy the expression that I'm using here or just download this nuke project file on the description. And then I merge this flickering light on top of the plates that I have darkened. And this is what we have. Now let's start compositing the fire. We're going to start with just one, which is this ground fire from ground fire volume two. Usually before I merge any elements, I always make sure to add a reformat so it has the same dimension as the plate, which this fire already has, but I did anyway just in case. And then we want to merge it on top of our plate. And then let's get transform and position this inside of the car. Okay, so to make it look like the fire is inside, of course we have to roto mask the fire. So I want to create a roto shape of this car window and windshield. And then let's use that to merge mask our fire. And then whenever you do a mask, my advice is to always give at least a one or two pixel blur so the cutout edges isn't too sharp. Now, I want some part of the flame to break out of the windshield. Easy peasy, all I have to do is to create a garbage mask here. And there we go, we have the fire half contained while half other is coming out. Now our fire is moving super slow. We can speed it up using a node called Chronos. I like to plug it at the very start of the node and then you want to copy the input range of the clip into the Kronos node and then speed it up by let's say two times. Great. Next, I want to offset the timeline of the fire a little bit. So let's get time offset, go to the dope sheet and then offset our fire. Perfect. Next, let's add a backdrop node and nickname our cluster of nodes here. Now, of course, in the final shot, I use multiple fire elements. So here I have them, and as you can see, I have done the exact same things I did with the first fire. I retime them, reformat, create a mask if needed. And of course, also I added a backdrop and nickname on them so we don't get confused on which is which. So now let's merge all the fires here. And here we have our fire branch of the node being merged into our plate. To make sure the fires are merging with each other seamlessly, I want to change the merge into plus. One thing you notice that all of our fires look different to each other. So what we want to do is to color match all the fires so they all look the same. So first I want to color correct our windshield fire here. So let's add grade, then remember to unpremult the alpha of your elements before doing color correction and then pre-molting it back again. Unpremult would make sure that you get the right color transparency when you are doing color correction. You can also do the unpremold and premold process without the sandwiching the node by going to the unpremold on the grade node and click on alpha. Either way, it works. And I'm going to do this unpremold and premold process every time I do color correction on our VFX element. So for the color correction, I want to increase the brightness until we get a little bit more of the highlights. And then I'm gonna go to the gamma and I want to break up the RGB here and then I want to push the red a little bit. My goal is to basically just create a bit more contrast between the highlights here and the mid-tones and dark colors of the edge, but not too much. Great, so now we want the other fires to have this look. All of these fires 
are already looking around the right ballpark color wise except our other fire here is a bit desaturated and also not super bright so let's just add saturation to match the levels of the saturation we had on the other fire and then using grade i will bump up the brightness a little bit more basically you want to go back and forth to make sure the fire is matching okay so all the fire now has matching pretty well next we're going to add the glow the following glow techniques is something that I've learned from our friend Hugo Guerra from Hugo's desk that I have modified a bit. So we want to break up our glow into three layers. First is the inner highlight glow and then the midtones glow and then the outer glow. So first let's start with the midtones glow. We want to create a dot here and we want to add our glow node branching from it. And then on the glow, we want to click effects only so we only have the effects without the actual element so now what i want to do is i want to increase the tolerance of the glow just a little bit and then i want to reduce the brightness and saturation by half and then let's push the glow size a little bit okay so now it looks unremarkable but that is fine what we're going to do next is we are going to merge screen this glow back into the element and then reduce the mix just a little bit. So this is before the midtone glow, this is after. So now let's add the second glow, we want to branch it again. And the second glow is the highlight glow. So let's click effects only, and because we only want the highlights, let's push the tolerance pretty high, and then reduce the brightness and saturation just a touch. And then for the size, I want it to be very small. And then once again, let's merge screen it back into the element. And this is what we have. We have a little bit more push on the highlights of the fire. Okay, so this is our glow so far. Now let's add the outside glow. However, we're not actually going to insert this outside glow into the effects. We're going to implement it directly into the plate. So here, let's select effect only and then increase the tolerance and brightness a little bit and then let's push down the saturation just a touch but then on the size we're going to set it really big like 500 so now we have this really great gloom effect and so now we want to merge this to the plate just before the fire and then set the operation to plus so then the next thing i want to do is i want the fire to blend a little bit better with the plate to do that, we're going to go to the merge of the fire, not the merge of the outer glow here. And we want to change the operation to either plus or screen. Plus is technically more accurate because fire is light, so it has an additive property. But I don't like the overexposed look that it has on this specific shot. So I'm just going to go with screen. Okay, so we have our fire. So now before we move forward, I just want to add some backdrops to some of our effects to make it easier to navigate this script later. Next, let's add some light interaction and some texture on the car. Thankfully, we already have a lot of heavy lifting done by the artificial light on set for the light interaction, but let's push it a little bit more. And because of course this is a burning car, it needs to have some burnt mark. So let's get this burnt mark texture here and merge it above the fire. And then to align this to the car, we're going to use Card 3D. This node allows you to move your footage in 3D without the need of 3D scene. And then I want to mask this so this burn mark only affect the hood of the car. And then I want to duplicate the burn mark to put it on the side of the car. And then we want to reduce the merge mix to make it blend a little bit better with the surface. Next, I want to add some extra brightness of when the fire makes contact with the car. So let's get great. And we want to increase the lift. And then let's click on the color wheel and change the value to be more orange. And then of course, we want the gray to only affect certain parts. So let's add a mask to it. Now here, the color is still a little bit too much. So let's just reduce the lift. There we go. You also want to make sure that the shape of the light interaction mimics the shape of the fire. Next, I'm going to add the fire's reflection on the car hood. 
So let's go to our hood fire here. And then I want to create a branch just before it enters the glow. And then I'm going to add transform. And I'm going to flip the footage to create a fake reflection. And then I'm going to merge screen it back into the fire. And then of course, I want to mask the reflection so it only appears on the hood. And then this reflection would not this be clear and sharp, especially with the burn mark present. So let's copy our burn mark texture and it's card 3D. And we want to use that as a mat to stencil our reflection from it. And then let's get blur to blur it out just a touch. And then let's get multiply to pull the opacity just a bit. By the way, we have a lot of other content on our channel like VFX breakdowns, stock footage announcements, and other tutorials that we release weekly. So make sure to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out and help us reach 100,000 subscribers. And now, let's go back to the video. Okay, so now let's composite our smoke fire. So we have two types of smoke that we want to composite. One is the black thick smoke that is going upwards. And then there is the white thin smoke that is a bit more atmospheric in nature. The first smoke that I want to composite is the thick black smoke. And I will be using this close-up of large scale smoke plume volume one. And of course, just like the fire, I have added a chronos to speed up the animation of the smoke and then some time offset to offset the timing. And of course, reformat it just in case. So now I want to merge this smoke into the plate, but I want to merge it behind the fire. And then let's add transform. And then of course we want to mask out the bottom here. And then I want to darken the smoke. So let's add grade. And of course pre-mold on pre-mold it. And let's darken it to match the blackness of the plate. Then maybe change the gamma also. So a bit so it's a bit more orange. Now I want the smoke to be brightened up exclusively by the brightness of the fire. Uh, so to do that, we are going to borrow the information that we had earlier from here. And we want to create a new branch just right here. And let's add a blur node. And then I want to blur it really high. And then maybe let's get grade again to brighten our blur. So we get this hotspot in the middle. And then let's go back to our smoke plume again just before we color correct it. And we want to create a branch for this one. And we want to create a branch again as well. And then on this branch, we're going to color correct it again. And this time I'm going to make it really bright orange. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these two. And then instead of over, we're going to switch to multiply. And there we go. I want to go back to the grade here a little bit and push it so we can get more hotspot on our smoke. And then we want to put this glowing smoke that we had on top of our black smoke. So let's merge it on top. There we go. And then merge this into the plate. Boom. So now we have this, we have the fire glow and we have the fire. Now, of course, this is pushing a little bit too much. So we can just go back to the color grading and just make sure to play around with the settings until we find the right look of our fire smoke. Okay, so that was the black smoke. Now let's do the white thin smoke. For that, I will be using this small scale smoke plume and this smoke doesn't have any alpha channel on it, doesn't have any transparency. So I'm going to bring a shuffle node and I'm going to use the green channel as my alpha. So now let's merge this on top of our fire and we're going to position it here. Then of course this smoke is too small. So what I will do is to make a duplicate by creating a branch and merge it into itself. And then of course we want to roto the smoke and we want to color correct it. So for the color correction, I just want to make it a little bit more orange. Great. And then just like the black smoke, I want this white smoke 
to be masked out by the brightness of the fire. So let's merge the smoke with that blur again. And then of course, we're going to change this to multiply. Perfect. So now we have this, but of course our white smoke is getting too thick. So what we can do is we can go back to the grade here and reduce the multiply or the opacity. And then we want to mask our smoke here. So it is behind our actor. And also I want to mask out the middle part of the smoke. So the values doesn't add up with the fire. So let's create a mask. And I want to roto the middle here. And instead of masking, of course, I want to do the opposite of masking, which is stencil. There we go. And we want to blur it out. Now to roto our guy, we can do that manually, or you can use this mat that I created that we can use to substitute the roto. So this matte footage doesn't have an alpha channel. So again, we're going to use shuffle to use the green channel as the alpha. And then we're going to merge this mat with the roto. So now we still have a little bit of smoke breaching through here. And that is not from the white smoke that is actually from the black smoke. So the black smoke needs to be masked as well. Okay. So here our smoke is looking a little bit still, you know, too thick. Let's change the merge from over the screen. There we go. So now it's like the brightness isn't too much. So here what I'm going to do is just adjust my scene a little bit before doing some final touches. Like for example, I want to scale down the black smoke a little bit and change the outer glow tint into a bit more orange. And then I want to add another fire on the tire. I isolated the bottom part of this wall fire that I have rotated and then merged it with the other fire. For the reflection, I did the same thing as before, except I flipped it horizontally and brightened the reflection to match with the specular reflection on the bumper. And then after that, I added another white smoke that is coming out of that new fire. And then after that, I'm just merging additional elements on top of the fire to help sell the scene, like fire embers and a haze fog. And the very final effects I did was creating heat distortion effect using a noise that I used as a forward UV channel. And then I used eye distort to drive some distortion using that forward UV channel. And that was basically the shot. And once again, if you're looking for VFX stock footage like we used in this tutorial, you can check out our website at actionvfx.com. We provide a vast library of high quality VFX assets that you can purchase right now for your projects. Learn more about this and our subscriptions below. And that was the tutorial on compositing fire in Nuke. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit like, subscribe, and let us know in the comment section below what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see next. See you next time. Bye-bye.